One of my favorite reasons to use a Ranjit view for tracks is the fact that I can build a set that looks like this. I can press play at the beginning of my set and it's gonna automatically run throughout all of my songs. I can get my transitions perfectly and it's awesome. But what if you wanna have multiple songs in one set and get individual access to each of those songs? That's what I wanna show you how you can do in this tutorial. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you like using Ableton Live on stage, performing with Ableton Live on stage, then make sure you hit subscribe. I post a new video every single day at 10 a.m. Central and I don't want you to miss it. So let me show you what I've got going on here. I've got an Ableton Live set built. I've got multiple songs. Again, this is great if I press play, it's gonna automatically run between those. But how do I get individual access to those songs? Well, it all comes down to uh, one specific thing. And I've already added this to my set, but let me show you what it is. It's the goal and the key here to unlock this ability is to add locators to each of your songs. Let's go to song one here. This is my locator. Uh, and let me show you what I can do. I can click this locator, press space bar, and start playback directly from that location. If I scroll a little further, I can go to this song and press playback directly from here and skip every song and every part of my set before that. So let's talk about how to add a locator. I'm gonna delete this one and we'll start from scratch. So I'm gonna to go to the beginning of my stems, right where this song is starting, and I'm gonna move my mouse up to what's called the scrub area. Uh, you'll see this little speaker icon show up, and I'm gonna right click and select add locator. Now the name of the song is a better word, so I'm gonna go ahead and type the name of the song here. Uh, and you'll see that locator is added at the beginning of my song. Actually, let's zoom in a little bit. You'll see it's not at the beginning, so let's just nudge it over. There we go. So it's perfectly right at the beginning of that song. So what's great, as long as your songs have locators, uh, I can zoom out a little and I can click this song. We can start right here. You'll see we're starting later in our set. I can click this one, we'll start right here. Again, we're starting even later in our set. So just simply by adding locators to your song, uh, again, you're gonna have flexibility to jump to individual songs in your set, which makes this so much more practical on stage. I can still press play and run throughout my entire set, or I get individual access to each of my songs. But let's take this a step further. So I'm gonna go back into my set, and I want to go up here to the upper right-hand corner of live screen and click key. Then I'm gonna zoom in to song one here. I wanna make it to where I can use keys on my computer keyboard to trigger individual songs. The thing that makes, makes most sense to me is to click on this locator, press one on my computer keyboard, and then let's click out of key. Uh, as a bonus, quick way to access that, hit Command K if you're on a Mac, hit Control K if you're on a PC, and that's gonna get you in key, into key assign mode. Let's try this out. So if I press one and then press space bar, this is gonna start playing song one. Let's jump ahead in our set. Let's go to song four. It's gonna start me at song four. Two is gonna take me to song two. Three is gonna take me to song three. So that's a really great way to access individual songs. Again, we're taking a step further, but I don't wanna look like I'm checking my email on stage. Both of these scenarios are great, but it means I've gotta be hunched over my keyboard and people are gonna go, what the heck is that guy doing? I wanna be able to stay focused on the performance. I wanna be able to stay in the moment to do this. I wanna show you next how you can use a MIDI controller to trigger this and to control individual songs in your set list. But before I do that again, remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you see when I post new content every single day, 10 a.m. Central. Okay, so let's check this out. I've got my MIDI controller set up here. This is the Looptimus by Loop Community. If you're a guitar player, this is a great controller. I'm connected via USB, which is powering this. Let me show you what we need to enable over in Ableton Live. So I'll take you back into Live. I'm gonna do Control Comma. This is, um, or Command Comma. This is my setting on Mac. If I'm on a PC, I'm gonna do Control Comma to go into Preferences. I'm gonna to go to the Link Tempo MIDI tab. I'm looking for my Lutimus, which is my foot controller here. You see it connected uh, to my computer, it's showing up. I wanna make sure uh, that I've enabled remote. Okay, so remote is enabled on my Lutimus. Now I wanna to go to song one. So let's scroll over here, let's get back to song one. This time, I'm gonna go up to the upper right hand corner to MIDI assign mode. I'm gonna click that. Uh, pro tip, I could also access this by doing uh, Command M on my keyboard if I'm on a Mac or Control M if I'm on a PC. And I wanna click on a better word. And then let's take you back to our Looptimus and I'm going to click this first button here. Okay, let's show you what that looks like over in live. You'll see we've mapped something there. Now let's scroll over to song two. Okay, so here's my locator for song two. So I'm gonna click that. And then let's go back over here. We're gonna press this for song two. Let's do one more just for good measure. Okay, so let's take you back to live. Uh, let's show you song three here. And we're gonna click this over on our Looptimus and that's gonna select song three. 
So now let's go back to live. We'll do Command M, Control M if you're on a PC, and we're gonna zoom out a little bit. Now, I'm gonna press button one on my Lutimus, so I'll show you what I'm gonna press. I'm gonna press this, but let's actually show you Ableton Live so you can see it in action. This is gonna take me to song one. This is gonna take me to song two and then song three. Now in order to play these, I need to map my play button. So I'm gonna do Command M in Ableton Live. You see I've got something mapped there. We're gonna delete this. I wanna remap this to my MIDI controller. So uh, let's take you back here. Let's pick, we're just gonna pick this button, okay? We could use anything on our MIDI controller to make this happen. And let's take you back into Live. So now let's go to song two. And then if I wanna play from this position, I can press play and that's gonna start playback. Now, if you're smart, you're following along, the next possible question you have is, okay, well, this is great, but how can I make it to where on my MIDI controller, I could press two for song two and immediately start playing? Well, I wanna show you exactly how to do that. But in order to see that, you've gotta subscribe and I'm gonna show you that next week. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, enable the bell icon and join me next week where I show you how to do everything we did here but with one button. Take care, everybody. See you on the next one. Bye.